this. <laughs> yeah, all this. So yeah, right as I was graduating actually, they were downsizing everything. And that was the year before the Twin Towers happened. And yeah, since then, I mean... <laughs> Dude, I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I know. Sometimes I do feel a little bit out of place, but it's all right. Yeah. You don't seem it, though. I mean... People have always told me I look a lot younger than I am. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, if we're going by maturity level, I'm about in the sixth grade. <laughs> so. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yeah, but that was, uh, I mean, after that happened, the funding for things like theater, art, music, fuck. We're all done now, guys. Yeah. Yeah. That was originally, I mean, I, was, I thought I was really going to go into a career teaching, like a teaching probably college, mm -hmm. stagecraft and painting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, at the time, I don't know. Did I tell you about that? No. I, I that was my plan for for a while. You know, I was gonna get, go teach scene design somewhere. Gonna go to I was gonna go to graduate school right after I graduated from undergrad. But I got this job down in Bellevue East. Yeah. I loved that job. Yeah. Those people were so fantastic. My high schoolers. Yeah. They were so great. They would like, they would go to work at night and then they would come back by at one in the morning with a bag of food for me. <laughs> <laughs> and they would say, you get to sit down, we will paint for an hour and they would paint for an hour. <laughs> and then I'd go back and join them when I was done eating. But my guy who worked at McDonald's, man. Yeah. <laughs> so Mike, he was so cool. But, uh, um, but yeah, I loved that job. Yeah. But, like, I think I looked around my senior year and I realized that my professors were not getting more sleep than I was. They were not, I mean, they were not going home at night. They were not, I just thought, am I signing up for an entire life of giving up everything so that this board can be painted like a brick wall and people will think it's a brick wall from 30 feet away? Yeah. Seriously. So I decided to not do that. Yeah. But it was hard decision. Yeah. So what made you decide to go in MIS then? Well, um, when I graduated, I went into uh, I was going to take the world over with a painting business <laughs> because I can paint anything. If you need a 50 foot tall Elvis, I can paint this for you. Tall Elvis. All right. How much money do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I can paint it for you, but it's gonna take a while, and so you're gonna have to feed me. Yeah. Uh, uh, man, I can I can paint anything. I've got I've got some pictures of some stuff I painted on my phone, <clears throat> but people don't need that. People oh. need this white wall painted white and. Uh, I was uh, actually painting down at Office Air Force Base when the Twin Towers oh, happened. Wow. Yes, I was painting and people with guns came by and said, you need to leave. And I said, you know, how about I not clean out my brush? How about I just... And they were putting up the concrete barriers when I was leaving. Wow. It was like an hour before the uh, the boy who w would be king landed. Um, yeah. But uh, anyway... At that moment, I thought, I don't know if a mural painting career is going to be happening right now. Yeah. Decided to go and get an office job, and I got an office job at this place. They made um, scrapbooking dies. Okay. 
and uh, and I was the person who drew them up on the computer, made sure that the drawing would work because you sent the drawing away to the laser people so they would burn mm -hmm. it in the board, yeah. and you also sent it to the bender people so that they could bend a piece of rule into that shape, sharpen rule. Yeah. So, so I was doing that, and uh, there was this really annoying task that we had to do every day. It's called the burn list. Uh, I told you this story. Uh, no. What we had to do was people would order dies, mm -hmm. and so in order to get these burned and, and have the sharpened rule put in there, you had to take the drawing and put it into a layout. The laser would burn the layout. This, this task took between four and eight hours a day. Um, it was split up between people in the office the CAD office, uh, computer-aided drafting. People yeah. hated this job. People would do everything they could to avoid this yeah. job, to put it on somebody else. There were fights. There were verbal fights. There was uh, just ignoring the fact that the sheets were there. Yeah. You know, it was a small room, but we could all ignore it. And, uh, I mean, it was just... It was legion. And so, one day, I'm pissed at the person that I sit with, because she's being a total bitch to me. Yeah. And the lights go off, the power goes out. Uh -huh. We're sitting there, emergency generators. I don't want to fucking talk to her. So I open the AutoCAD manual, and I begin reading. And um, for a long time, I had just had a hidden suspicion that there was something that we could do with the computers because this burn list, right, we would take this, it was a stack of sheet, a stack of papers like this, yeah. and we would, we would have to type line by line into the computers. And we would also have to scan the barcodes line by line by line in a separate operation. And then we would have to take the, the other code on the other side of the page and feed it into a different program. So that's three programs. Yeah. But I'm thinking, a computer spat this information out and we are manually translating it to three different programs. I just thought there had to be a way and I didn't know what it would be, but I'm reading the AutoCAD manual that day and it talked about automatic batch scripting. And all of a sudden I saw something in my head and it was, I, I saw people calling in and I saw a die falling into place, almost like Tetris. Uh -huh. A die falling into place on the laser layout. And then I saw another one. And I thought, there's got to be a way that we can make this happen. Yeah. And I think I found it. And it took me six months, several presentations to the business people. Yeah. <laughs> because they were like, why aren't you drafting something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, do you realize... How much money and time you're gonna say? Well, because <clears throat> when you get everything into a layout, yeah. you have to order because uh, the the laser burned all the inside designs, mm. and then it would burn the outside of the die. Mm. If you had the line, the lines had to burn in a specific order. Okay. There's a hundred dies to a sheet. They Every every die, of course, is a square, so it has four lines. Yeah. And you've got to make them all go in a complete, exact order. If you miss one, there's a chance that the laser would, the laser head would, um, because it rested on the board. Yeah. If you miss one, and that laser head falls into a hole, two thousand dollars an hour is what it cost us to have that laser down. And the amount of human error that we spent fixing that stupid thing because that's a hard job trying to order all of those and even if somebody says RJ and you go like this and you come back and you're not in place and you don't realize it I mean it was it was dumb the amount of data entry we were doing it was dumb and so I made several presentations and they agreed to let me borrow a computer programmer uh, Brandon who was not always convinced that we could do it, but I would just be really patient and like give him the puppy eyes and not leave him <laughs> until it was done. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we took that and we made it into a half an hour push button. 
easiness that never ever crash the laser and so <clears throat> that was the first time that I mean seriously I saw I saw it in my head mm -hmm. and I was able to make it happen and then it was like well what else could I do yeah. there's nothing else at that company so I moved on to another company <laughs> and uh, I got to this furniture place and this is the place that I worked before I came to school. Mm -hmm. I did uh, drawings in AutoCAD of uh, how all the freaking you know, panels and junctions and desks and, you know, I, I did that and I managed inventory for the field offices of HDR. Oh my god. <laughs> inventory. It's better, it's, it's a little better when you have pictures <laughs> but we for our team we completely revamped every process that there was yeah. Jennifer just she was actually in charge of like hiring me she was the design manager and then like seven months later she moved on to sales doing HDR and so I was just kind of I don't know, alone, and people weren't responsive to my suggestions.